This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about proof of stake Bitcoin, but first some necessary historical context. September 15th is widely celebrated in the crypto community as what's called ETH Castration Day. That was the day in 2022 when Ethereum moved from using a proof of work consensus mechanism, namely mining, to a proof of stake consensus mechanism, namely staking. Now proof of work, as you probably already know, this is when we have mining rigs, they're running SHA-256 hashes until they get an output that satisfies certain conditions. Proof of work is thermodynamically robust and less subject to capture. Having more coins under proof of work does not give you more control over the protocol. Unlike proof of stake, proof of stake really recreates the fiat system by putting the rich in control. The more coins you have, the more votes you have, the more control you have over the protocol, and the more blocks you get to produce. Now, sadly, this move from proof of work to proof of stake, like most castrations, did not work out well for ETH. I made a video at the time that Ethereum had successfully castrated itself. This is what the relative performance of Bitcoin, which is in orange, and Ethereum looks like since September 15, 2022. Bitcoin is up over 212%. ETH is only up 51%. So the Bitcoin, so the ETH BTC exchange rate has been plummeting and ETH has really been bleeding out. I found this rare historical photo of Vitalik mining ETH before this the move to proof of stake. So this is now more just a historical oddity, but it's beautiful to see how it used to work out. Now, there have been a lot of responses to this move to proof of stake by Ethereum. For example, Greenpeace loved it and Ripple, which is the issuer of XRP, loved it as well. And they teamed up. Chris Larson of Ripple gave Greenpeace something like $5 million to try to get to lobby the Bitcoin community to move away from proof of work to proof of stake. Here's the announcement from Greenpeace. Ethereum's long-awaited merge to a proof of stake consensus mechanism uses 99.95% less energy. That's really working out well for them, obviously. If you turn off all your electricity, if you go back to the Stone Age, that will save electricity as well. Ethereum is leaving Bitcoin as the largest cryptocurrency using the outmoded high energy proof of work consensus mechanism. And so Greenpeace was applying pressure to Bitcoiners to move to proof of stake like they actually cared. But the funny thing about Greenpeace is they don't seem to have a problem with electric vehicles. And Bitcoin mining has approximately the same carbon footprint as your Tesla. So when it's your Tesla, wow, it's electric, so it releases no CO2. But when it's Bitcoin mining machines, no, stop, you're going to boil the oceans. And so this really is the hypocrisy of groups like Greenpeace. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's mission. Hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So of course, Bitcoin and the Bitcoin community told Greenpeace to go fork itself. But what I didn't realize at the time was that there already existed a proof of stake version of Bitcoin, aptly called Bitcoin proof of stake, Bitcoin POS, which can stand for other things, obviously, in the English language. This performance of Bitcoin POS really has been a POS. It is now down 99.66% since inception. Looks like it came out during the middle of the pandemic in July of 2020, briefly spiked, and then basically proceeded to zero, now trading at less than half a penny, while the real Bitcoin is now trading at 63,280. So that's quite a divergence, trading for less than half a penny and trading for over $60,000. It's almost like the world values this proof of work currency more than the proof of stake version. As it turns out, Bitcoin POS is not a fork of Bitcoin. It was done independently and it was just sort of launched in the middle of 2020. What are future development plans? Bitcoin POS aspires to become a world-class financial instrument available on the cryptocurrency market. It looks like that did not exactly happen. It would appear that the world has no interest in broken money like proof of stake Bitcoin. Chris Larson and Greenpeace execs are welcome to invest their money in Bitcoin POS if it makes them happy, but I would guess that they're actually more motivated by hatred or jealousy than anything else. They want to destroy the real Bitcoin, which is proof of work. They're not really interested in the environment. And then Chris and Ripple, of course, have their own problems fighting the SEC over the last few years. They've had a couple of victories. The SEC is now cross-appealing, or the SEC is appealing, and then Ripple is planning to cross-appeal. 
it's just a bunch of legal drama that doesn't matter. We can see here XRP continuing to bleed out against Bitcoin, even after their legal victory. If we scroll in here, we can see the spikes that happened when uh, Ripple had various legal victories against the SEC, but it hasn't mattered. They've continued to bleed out and are hitting new lows as we speak. Meanwhile, the real Bitcoin remains proof of work. And I think Michael Saylor sums it up best in his famous quote, Bitcoin is a swarm of cyber hornets serving the goddess of wisdom, feeding on the fire of truth. And that idea of cyber hornets, I think refers to Bitcoin mining rigs, which make a very high pitched uh, buzzing sound when you get close to them, feeding on the fire of truth, exponentially growing ever smarter, faster and stronger behind a wall of encrypted energy. This is really the difference between the major and the last standing proof of work cryptocurrency and various imitations. Most cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin POS are POSs and they are proof of stake and they're subject to the same problems that Ethereum and Solana and Cardano, etc., all of which continue to bleed out against Bitcoin are subject to. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.